Oh, uh, we're finally here. I can't believe it. But I'm, I'm going to read it this month. It's gonna happen probably, if not next month. I don't know. Okay, can't. I'll never speak French again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm Rachel, this is Let Me in the Library, and today I'm going to give you my February TBR. So if you're already on my channel, sometimes, you might already know that I do this TBR game every month in which I roll a bunch of d20s and whichever numbers that those dice land on correspond to a bunch of prompts, and I will then use that to choose the books that I will be reading every month. I have all of those prompts in the description down below, but if this is still kind of confusing, which is fair, you might want to check out some of my past videos where I kind of explain it. The first time I did this was in October, so I'll leave my October TBR also linked in the description in case you want to check out exactly how the rules go, but I'm not really going to go into that now. We're just going to go right into the rolls. I'm going to show you what I rolled. I rolled 12 times this month, and then I'm also going to show you my D4 rolls. So this is what happens every time I roll six dice and I get a little D4. It's a four-sided dice, and it allows me to change a prompt if I wish with the number that I get on the dice, so I can move it either up or down on my list of prompts. Again, uh, if it's confusing, check the description. So without further ado, let me show you what I rolled, and then we'll get right into the books that I chose. Okay, so we have a 7, a 5, 4, a 16, an 11, and a 17. Let's roll again. Lost a dice. Ten, nine, three, nine, twelve, seventeen. Okay, I'm gonna roll a four-sided die to try to change a roll. So we have a one. I'm gonna roll another one. That's a two. So to start off with, I had a three, which means I need to read a TBR veteran. So I actually picked out a book that I heard about over the summer very often, and that was The Deep by River Solomon. It is about mermaids, which are born from African slaves that were thrown overboard. They were kind of able to transform into mermaids, and all of this history is contained in one person. So she has to hold all of the knowledge of this past, and it's very difficult for her, and I think she needs to kind of share this with her people. I got the audiobook that's narrated by Debbie Diggs, which is very exciting, and I've also heard that this is based on a song called The Deep, which David sang with his band. I don't remember the name of the band, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, seems pretty interesting. The next roll I got was a four, so what happens then is I get another little four-sided dice and I roll it, and whichever number that lands on will correspond to the pile that I have laid out of books I want to read. Okay, we're gonna do our D4. Here, we're going to do the dice roll. So this is pile one, two, three, and four. And whatever number I get, that's the book I'm going to read. Two, which is Where Dreams Descend. I pre-ordered this book. I did not actually pick it up, but I do know that it is kind of like Phantom of the Opera inspired. Uh, I think it's also kind of like carnival-y. This is a book that Darian loves with her whole soul, so I'm really hoping that it's very good for me because I've realized recently that Darian and I have very similar taste in books, so I'm really hoping that this will be a huge hit for me because this instantly became one of Darian's favorites. In a city covered in ice and ruin, a group of magicians face off in a daring game of magical feats to find the next headliner of the conquering circus. Fame and glory await the winner, but no contestant is safe when an unseen danger begins striking behind the scenes. Very Phantom of the opera E, but I also love this idea of like of a game and a winner, kind of like very Hunger games -y. Accidents, injuries, missing magicians, though each act grows riskier, the show must go on and the three entangled within the dark heart of it will do whatever it takes to keep their secrets from rising to the surface. I didn't even read the full flap yet and I'm getting pretty excited. So this sounds really good. I also managed to get the audiobook, so I think that will help me if I need to do a hybrid read. So very excited about this one. Moving right along, I changed this role to a six and I got Buddy Read, and for this I am choosing A Court of Wings and Ruin. I changed this because I already am part of a group that is buddy reading the entire Akatar series, so I wanted to fit that into my TBR without having to pile up so, 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 so many books at the end of my dice game because I have so many other books that I'm also very interested in this month. So I managed to squeeze that in here. A Court of Wings and Ruin is the third book in the Akatar series. I really enjoyed the first book. I 
didn't love the second book. So I've heard that the third book is more aligned to my taste. So I'm hoping that this is going to turn things around for me and I'm going to really enjoy it. But either way, I am looking forward to just continuing with the series and seeing what happens. Okay, next up I got a seven, which is nonfiction. And for that, I'm going to be reading Becoming by Michelle Obama. I was shocked. I was actually able to get a hold of this on my Overdrive app. It was just available. And usually every time I try to go look and see if I can get the audiobook, it's like you can get it in six months if you put a hold on it now which sucks so I was very shocked to actually get a hold of this and it just turned out that I got this role so I'm definitely gonna use that for this this is very exciting so I got two nines nines are adult science fiction or fantasy and one of those I'm gonna be using to read a history of what comes next I got an arc of this which is so exciting because this is by Sylvain Nouvelle who wrote my favorite book in the world which is Sleeping Giants I love it with my whole heart and now I actually have his new book I'm so excited I know a little bit about it which is kind of that there are these generations of people who keep kind of living the same lives and there are these women who are trying to help get people to space, I think. And there are a lot of men that are trying to stop them. So I don't know. I think there's something like with Nazis in World War II. And honestly, that's usually not something I would pick up or reach for. But it's Sylvain Nouvelle, so I'm going to read it and I'm probably going to love it. So I'm excited. I have it on my Kindle already. I'm definitely going to try to read it very soon, even though I think it already came out but I'm, I'm, I'm psyched. I'm so happy. For my other nine role, I'm using Record of a Spaceborn Few. This is the third book in the Wayfarer series, and since I'm doing part of the, the Wayfarer along thing, uh, I wanted to read the next book. I really enjoyed the first book. The second book, I don't know why it didn't exactly land for me. There's still some opportunity for me to really love the series. Of course, I loved To Be Taught a Fortunate, so I'm perfectly willing to give Becky Chambers every chance that she needs to win my heart potentially with a new book. But I also found that in the past when I was reading those first two, I wasn't reading it physically. It was really hard for me to focus in. So I think having the physical copy as I do the audio will really make a difference for me and it may make this a really great book for me. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit complicated. So I rolled a 10. A 10 means that I play the Bogopolathon board, and what I do with that is I roll two 20-sided dice because there are 40 spaces on the board, and then I use that to determine what I'm gonna read. At the time when I decided to include this in the TBR game, I kind of forgot that there are chance and community spaces, so I happened to land on one of those, and because in the original Bogopolathon board thing, you're supposed to kind of like have chance cards printed, and I just didn't want to do that, it's also said that you can just kind of run a random number generator. So I basically did that with a shelf I have on Goodreads for my most highly recommended books. These are books that other booktubers and friends have recommended to me as books that they love a lot. So I decided to do that and I ended up with The One. This is a book by John Mars that a lot of my friends have been raving about recently. I think this is about something in the future where they can kind of determine who your soulmate is. So I think there are some issues with this being that like you might already be married to somebody and then you find out the one is somebody else. And I do like the idea of this system that can match people up because I think it's like very dystopian in a way. But I think there is a murder mystery with a serial killer. I'm really excited about this. I'm buddy reading this with Christine from the Roomies Digest. If you have not checked out the Roomies Digest, please do that. It's for your health. But Christine posted the February TBR for the Roomies and I noticed that Christine and I had so many books in common so we decided to buddy read this. So I rolled an 11 and for an 11 I need to run a random letter generator. So the random letter generator will land on a letter which I need to find a book whose title or author begins with that letter. So I ended up picking Riot Baby by Tochi Anibuchi. It's about this young black girl who has this ability to see people's deaths, which is really scary for her because she's very young and it seems like every person that she knows, she can just suddenly see the moment of their death. And it's very horrific, uh, as I would assume it would be, but very often it seems like she can't do anything about it or at least that's the impression I get. I'm not sure if anybody else in her life knows that she has this ability. So I think she's going to be grappling with the distress of having this power and wondering maybe what she can do with it. I, I think it's going to partially be a message about inequality and why so often Black people are more at risk to die at a younger age because many systems are built against them. I'm not sure 
how much of this will be a supernatural thing, but I think it's a really interesting lens to examine this whole idea, and I'm really excited about it. Next up, I got a 12, and for that I'm going to read a new-to-me author, and for that I picked The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, because I've never read a V.E. Schwab book before, and I'm also going to be buddy reading this with Christine. I feel like a lot of people give this five stars, and I just don't feel like it's going to be a five star for me for some reason. I think like when this book came out, I was not hyped about it really, because I wasn't a V.E. Schwab fan. But this will be an interesting dive into V.E. Schwab's work. From what I know, it is about this girl named Addie LaRue, who is... Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Addie LaRue. Okay, can't... I'll never speak French again. I'm so sorry. From what I know, it is about this girl named Addie LaRue, who made a deal with a devil-type person who basically allows her to live forever, but everybody forgets about her every time that they look away or something. So I guess that she meets people and they hang out, but as soon as they like leave the room and come back, they're like, oh, nice to meet you. Who are you? So it kind of sucks for her. And this was like her curse for 300 years. And I know there's a guy who can remember her and that's the whole thing, but I don't really know anything beyond that. So I'm interested to see what the hype is about. Oh, I switched out a role and I got a 14 and I did this so that way I could read an own voices book. So I'm reading Red at the Bone. This is a book about a family and their intergenerational trauma. There was a girl, I think she's the main girl, and she's about to have her 16th birthday party. She's going to be wearing this special dress, but the dress was really made for her mother who 16 years ago had her and she wasn't able to wear the dress because of this unexpected pregnancy. And so I think it's about how that kind of affected the entire family and the ripple effect that it had on everybody in their lives. So I rolled two 17s, which means that I'm going to pick two books that I think are going to be five star reads. And so the first five star prediction I have is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. People in a society who live in a society where death is no longer a thing. I think everyone has basically progressed their medical stuff to the point where nobody really gets sick, people don't really die at all anymore, and so now they have these kind of reaper people who go around and kill people at the appropriate time. This was very kindly gifted to me by Nitty. I'm so excited about it because Nitty loved this book, I know Susan loved this book, I know a lot of people love this book, and also there's a scythe along going on. It's starting this month and it's being hosted by a couple people including two of my friends, Mel from The Bookish Mel and Noelle from Noelle 7 Pages, so I'm really excited about trying this out. The second five-star prediction that I am picking is Grown by Tiffany G. Jackson. This is a book that is the pick for the 20-something book club, that's what it's called. Uh, that's also being hosted by two of my friends, Casey from Casey Can Read and Mafalda from Mafalda's Reading. This is a book about a girl who was scouted by this famous rapper who ends up dead, and everybody thinks that she killed him for some reason, and he was kind of her ticket to fame, compounded with the fact that I think he was abusive to her in some way. So I'm interested in this. I've heard a lot of people also give this five stars that I trust, so I am hoping this will be a great book for me. I'm hoping I can get my hands on it in time to discuss it with the 20-something book club. Speaking of book clubs. Okay, it's time to talk about some book clubs real quick. First off, we have the Winers Book Club. We're going to be reading Conviction. This is a book that is about... Anna's husband announces that he's leaving her for her best friend. Anna distracts herself with a true crime podcast until she recognizes the name of one of the victims and becomes convinced that only she knows what really happened. She throws herself into investigating the case, but Anna's past and present lives are about to collide. It is mixed pick, so we're going to be discussing this over on Mixed Channel. I think it'll be nice to have a little bit of a change of pace and do some thrillery type stuff. We haven't done that in a little while. And then I also have the Host Club. This is a manga book club, and this month is my month, so we're going to be discussing this on my channel. I'm so excited about this because I picked out three volumes of Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun and one volume of Hori Mia. Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun is so funny. This is about this girl who decides to go confess her love for this guy, and he somehow misinterprets her confession of love for her wanting to go work for him as help for a manga artist. So he actually draws and creates these very famous shoujo manga that actually are based off of the people that they know in school. And he's very embarrassed by it, so he doesn't want to tell anyone. So she's kind of the only person who knows his secret. Of course, they have this very cute friend group. It's just a very wholesome, very fun 
very very funny sort of manga and I really enjoyed what I saw of the anime. And then for Horimiya, this is a romance. It's been so long since I've read Horimiya that I honestly kind of forget what it's about. I think there's like a guy who's like very introverted and a girl who's very extroverted and it's sort of their relationship. It's very nice. It's not rushed. It's not insta-love. It's just cute and it's enjoyable and they're friends and they're friendly and I think it's friends to lovers. This is going to be over on my channel. We're going to do this on February 21st and we're definitely going to be doing some watch parties. So if you want to take part in that, join our Discord down there. And I won't promise this, but I'm going to attempt to also read the X Talk, which is the Sugar and Spice book club pick is about these two people who work at a radio station. They have this idea to have exes come on the show and give romantic advice to callers. And somehow these two rivals end up having to pretend to be exes so they can be on the show. And I'm also going to be trying to read Girl, Woman, Other for the Krusty's Club pick. Girl, Woman, Other is a collection of stories of Black British women, and I believe that they all interconnect in some way, shape, or form. I also want to participate in Blackathon, so I'm going to be joining the SFF team. So I need to pick three books uh, that fit these prompts. One is for kind of like Black spirituality, and for that I thought The Deep would work pretty well for that, being that it is a lot about the spirit of all of the people, their history, and how this now has to be carried out and passed along to different generations. And I also need to pick a book where Black main characters meet with an alien civilization. So I thought for that the group book, The Lesson, would be pretty good. But I think this alien civilization encounters these people and begin to change them. The last prompt is time travel. And for that, I actually put out something on Twitter because I had no idea what to pick for this. But I've heard about this book, Long Division, which seems pretty interesting. I think there's a rap contest and the person who won became this big internet sensation and became very famous and popular. And somehow their phone gets stolen and brought to the past and it's somehow going to be used to try to help save people from the clan. You all know, you all know me, the last book in a series of unfortunate events. Ugh, we're finally here. I can't believe it. Aline and I have been buddy reading this since way back when I started my channel, so I am ecstatic that we're gonna be finishing this and yet so sad. It's, it's very bittersweet, but I am thrilled because this is one of my favorite books in the series. It's going to be so great. It is the conclusion of this story about the Baudelaire children. I will say no more about it. I'm just very excited. I also want to read the first book in the Vampire Academy series. I also want to read The Midnight Library. My hold for this also came in. This, I think, is about a special kind of ethereal midnight library that exists between life and death. And it's about this main character who wants to commit suicide, but I think she gets transported to this midnight library and hopefully somehow it convinces her to kind of change her mind. I would also love to read The Hate You Give. I feel like Black History Month is the perfect time to be reading this. This is about a young girl named Star who witnesses the murder of her best friend when they get pulled over by a police car. And unfortunately, she has to deal with the grief of losing her best friend. When her best friend is killed, it becomes a national headline. So she gets kind of thrown into the spotlight and what she says really matters. I would also love to read The Hating Game, which I think is a co-workers to enemies to lovers romance. Her, it's great. I've been interested in romance recently. Here are a bunch of other romances that I also want to read, but I don't know if I'm going to get to them this month. But this was the first one that was really recommended to me that I think would be right up my alley. And of course, I'd also love to read Heartstopper. This was kindly gifted to me by Darian from Darian Reads. This is about this gay couple. It's a graphic novel over here. Um, and it is about their love story as they sort of develop these feelings for each other, confess that love, and have this wholesome relationship. No, I didn't read it. I didn't read it last month, okay? I didn't. I didn't. But this is the month I want to read it. It's a sapphic romance. It's time travel agents. What's not to love? What's not clicking? Why am I not reading this? I don't know. But I'm, I'm going to read it this month. It's going to happen probably. If not next month, I don't know. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me for my February TBR. If you're interested, you can subscribe down below. I have all my socials down there and everything. And don't forget to like this video and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're reading for February. What's your most anticipated book for February? If you've already read some stuff, what's been amazing? What's jumping out at you? Have you had any five-star reads this year yet? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm Rachel. This is Let Me in the Library, and I'll see you next time. Bye!